welcome back to the show cherries fans and welcome back to the show as well our good friends at luton town football club there is an unbreakable bond between our football clubs of course because of the recent situation involving tom lock here and of course going back a little bit further of course minus 30 and minus 17. we did recently play at dean court in that rearranged game and of course we were 3-0 down. It was literally a game of two halves before winning 4-3. Since then, AFC Bournemouth have gone from strength to strength and are now looking at Europe. Can we Can we do it? Can we do it? Do we want to do it? That is the big question. Luton are continuing their fight against relegation. They have been hampered with a number of injuries. However, Fingers crossed the Hatters can get themselves over the line. I'm sure everybody, AFC Bournemouth and all of our fan base, want Luton Town to stay in the Premier League. Now, I do have a very, very special guest. Now, my special guest has been on the show before. He is a journalist, a presenter, a former chairman of Luton Town Football Club. He is well known for presenting the number of TV programmes with the likes of Anne Diamond. He's now presenting Midlands Today. It is a pleasure to welcome back onto the show, Nick Owen. Welcome back to the show, Nick. How are you doing? Hi, Craig. Yeah, I'm doing OK. Thanks very much. Uh, as you probably know, I've had a, a tough old year health wise um, with being diagnosed with prostate cancer. But I had a, a major operation, a radical prostatectomy, as it's called, uh, last May. And um, touch wood, I am fine. It's been, as I say, a difficult 12 months or so. But um, uh, hopefully, touch wood. And you can only never say never with cancer. But at the moment, I seem to be clear of it. Excellent stuff. And I know that we have been in contact throughout that time as well. And, you know, hopefully, fingers crossed, everything is all good from now on. But Luton Town have had quite a good season last year, didn't they? Um, Promotion to the Premier League. Um, And we spoke, we're going back a couple of years now um, during the COVID period. And we spoke about Um, the minus 30 season and you know going into the National League as it was the conference at the time um, spending five years then there and did you imagine in your wildest dreams that Luton would be in the Premier League in such quick time? No to be honest I didn't I mean the main priority uh, obviously was to get back into the Football League and the consortium, the, the businessmen, the investors who took over the club uh, had in mind getting back to the championship, hopefully, by 2020. Uh, and that's why they called themselves 2020, the consortium. Um, the aim was that and also to get a new stadium underway. And they, they've achieved both. I mean, we're not in the new stadium, but it is just about to start being built. Uh, and everything is, um, uh, the you know, the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed. So that's very exciting. Um, And we ended up in the Premier League uh, far more quickly than we might have expected. I mean, how many teams, um, smaller clubs, expect to get in the Premier League anyway? And I put Bournemouth in that bracket, you know, with capacity of 10 or 11,000 and we're the same. Um, You just don't really think it's likely to happen. So, no, I certainly personally would never have thought of the Premier League, although I do know that our chief executive, Gary Sweet, has said the Premier League is something we aim for one day. So he was very ambitious, and I'm sure a lot of people said as we headed to play Braintree away on a Tuesday night, um, uh, what is this man on? But we've done it, and credit to so many people. You know, it's an unbelievable achievement. It's a fairy tale within football, I think. Um, And, uh, you know, besides all the players and the coaches and the managers and so on that have done it, uh, you've got to give credit to our investors who were there from day one in 2008 when things were looking horrendous and we got docked 30 points and um, we're going broke and going out of business. 
um, and they've stuck with it all the way through, kept us afloat, kept us going, kept the faith. They're all local people, mostly born in Luton. Uh, and here we are now in the Premier League, hopefully for next season as well. Well, actually, that was something I wanted to touch upon because that season, of course, we were deducted 17 points, as were Rotherham. Um, so we were both hit with these big points deductions. Uh, minus 30 is ridiculous, to be perfectly honest. It was always going to be almost impossible to turn it around. And so it proved. But um, with the points deductions that are happening in the Premier League this year, what do you make of those? Because, of course, Everton have been deducted points. Forest have been deducted points. But Man City and Chelsea seem to get away scot-free and it could effectively be to your advantage it's um it's a really difficult one because first and foremost the people who sort of suffer as much as anyone are the supporters as you well know um because you know bournemouth got that 17 as you said and did so well to come out of it and get to the premier league as well um so i always feel terrible for the supporters i really do um but you know if the rules are there and they've been broken i suppose it's only fair that they do get some sort of sanction um but i, I hate the whole thing i really do hate the whole points thing um there's talk of changing it now to a financial fine so that's not going to hurt a club like manchester city much is it um right. it's a very difficult thing to say because we're bordering on legality here you know whether people yeah. have actually broken the rules how serious is it and um what we should do about it it's very difficult my, my opinion essentially is that having suffered so much ourselves i think it's only fair that people who've broken the rules slightly different rules in this case um you know should get uh, uh, punished if they knew what the punishments were and they knew what they were doing um so you know we could stay up because of points deductions but one thing we insist on saying at luton is that we hope it doesn't come down to that we would hope to get out of it um, and points deductions are absolutely irrelevant. That That is the theme. And I know that Rob Edwards, our manager, just sort of doesn't think of a league table in terms of deductions. He thinks of it in terms of who's got what. And um, we'll take it from there. And it's up to us to win games. Well, I wanted to come on to the recent form because the recent form, when you look at it, um, doesn't look very good on paper. However... The side are fighting tooth and nail to stay in the Premier League. We saw that at Dean Court going 3-0 up. Um, of course, we did end up winning 4-3, ended up turning the game on its head. But I do feel that Luton have got, had some rotten luck with injuries. Firstly, um, you know, and thankfully he is getting a lot, lot better. Tom Lockyer being out um, is, you know, of course, that game was horrible it was a horrible situation to witness um and hopefully fingers crossed he goes from strength to strength but also the other injuries that you've had in the side um and i know that you made a tweet the other day about it how many players were out but how they fought against arsenal yeah i mean the injury situation is beyond ridiculous i've never known anything like it i know all clubs complain about injury, especially later on in the season. But we have 12 or 13 senior players out. And when you have a limited squad and, you know, you, you, you sort of, you've got players who are really, you know, as far as we're concerned, our best players out for a long time, even for the rest of the season. It's shattering. I mean, um, Elijah Adebayo, our top scorer, and very yeah. dangerous, he's proved in the Premier League. He's been out for weeks and weeks now and probably won't make it again this season. That's a terrible blow. And Tom Lockyer, well, I mean, that's another story again. And uh, Bournemouth and Luton, I think, will forever be linked in a very emotional way uh, and a genuine way with great affection from our end, I can tell you, for the way um, that was handled when Tom Lockyer went down that cardiac arrest. The most awful time. Yeah, He was the heart and soul of our club. Um, a, a great player, obviously, uh, a Welsh international. He just embodied the whole battling spirit of Luton Town FC. And to lose him was a terrible blow. Uh, but health obviously overrides all that. Um, oh. But other, we've got one proper sort of fit centre half at the moment. He's only about 21. Ted and Menge, you know, who we signed from Manchester United. And he's been an absolute star this season. Um, but apart from him, I mean, on uh, 
Wednesday night at Arsenal away, we had two goalkeepers on the bench, two goalkeepers, mm -hmm. four teenagers. One of those teenagers had to get permission from school to train with Luton last week and uh, had to um, come out of school or half term, I think it probably is, <laughs> Easter holiday. <laughs> Um, he was on the bench on Wednesday night, age 16. He's taking his GCSEs in a couple of months' time. So you can see, uh, I know it's a cliche, but we're really down to the bare bones. Um, yeah. Marvellous Nakamba, our sort of very important sort of uh, holding midfielder, who was our star player last season in the promotion year. He's been out more than half the season and we still won't see him again. Um, it's just terrible. So um, we've still got players who are battling for the badge, as they say. And I'm delighted to see, you know, Peli Ruddock Mapanzu, who played yes. for us in a conference. He was playing for us 10 years ago against Nuneaton and Braintree and the likes of Olferton. And he's now playing in the Premier League. He started at Arsenal the other night. Luke Berry, who we signed from Cambridge when we were in League Two, he played the other night. These guys, what a fantastic story it is for them alone. Uh, they've scored in all four divisions uh, up to the Premier League, and Luke Berry has now scored in the Premier League. Just hope Pelly can do it as well. Um, yeah. So, yeah, the injury situation is horrendous, but we're still battling away. The spirit is terrific. And some of our results, I know we've lost a lot of games, but my goodness, we've run it close and scored a lot of goals. So we're very proud of that. And if we can just turn it around the next few weeks, vital home games, um, who knows? Well, to, looking back at, you know, one result, as well that was very very impressive even though you did end up losing the game was that game against Arsenal at Kenilworth Road earlier on in the season um and you ran them so so close um it looked as if you was going to get a famous victory there um but oh yeah we were leading 3-2 at one stage you know yeah. and then it was 3-3 three, three, and that would have been a great point I mean to score three goals against Arsenal uh, yeah. the way Arsenal are these days, was a tremendous achievement. Um, and then, you know, heartbreak after the 90th, they get the winner. But, you know, Liverpool at home, they got an equaliser after the 90th. Uh, we've had so many games. And Villa, quite recently, you know, we were two down, came back to 2-2. Two -two, and they scored, I think, around about the 90th. We've had some terribly frustrating results when we've just been pipped at the post. Um, but it's still encouraging. And I think it's won a lot of fans from other clubs, you know, seeing us and how we go for it. I think Rob Edwards, our manager, uh, made a decision that, you know, we had to go for it. It was our best way of trying to get points in the Premier League was to go for it. Press hard, press high, keep attacking. And if we let in a few, perhaps that'll be balanced by the fact we score more. And uh, that's been the policy. It's been very entertaining. And we beat Brighton 4-0. We drew 4-4 at Newcastle. As we said, we'd lost just 3-4 at home to Arsenal. That's some terrific games, lots of goals, very entertaining. And the fans have stuck by them absolutely to a man and woman um, because they appreciate the difficulties we're under, um, but they also greatly appreciate the way we play and the, the attitude we've had. It's been very entertaining. The one thing I, I, thought, I thought, you know, is that Luton, this season, how you're playing does remind me of how we played under Eddie Howe in the first season in the Premier League. Everybody expected us to get relegated. I think Burnley and Sheffield United have had a different style. I think Sheffield United are a bit of a difficult case where they've, you know, had, well, they've lost a couple of players, but Burnley have tried to play this passing football, which doesn't really work. It feels that Luton have come into the Premier League with this real impetus, we'll score more than you, you know, we'll go for it. And that's what Eddie adopted as well. The only concern, and what I have noticed, of course, is that letting leads slip at the end, like the lead that you had at Dean Court, um, there's been a number of occasions where you've lost points in the dying moments of games. Um, what do you think the main reason for that is, Nick? Is it because the players are exhausted? Is it because of the depth of the squad? Or is it something else? I think it's because they've run themselves into the ground, to be honest. Yeah. Um, if you, I mean, I, I was a keen squash player when yeah. I was younger. And if you play someone who's, you know, a real pedigree top squash player, 
um, you find that they stand still and just ping it around and you run yourself into the ground, running around in circles, trying to keep up. And you're absolutely exhausted when they hardly break sweat. And although it's a, a slight exaggeration, but I sometimes feel it's a bit like that for us when we're playing these experienced, really talented, international class Premier League players who, you know, ping it about. And our guys do a lot of chasing, an enormous amount of chasing. And I just feel in the last uh, 10, 15, 20 minutes, they start really start to flag. Uh, I might be totally wrong here, but it's just my instinct. That, that is the case, that they've just run themselves so much into the ground that they um, just lose a little bit of concentration or whatever. And certainly, you know, very tired. Although, to be fair, we did score a very late equaliser at Crystal Palace, virtually the last touch of the game the other day. But um, I think there's a, an element to that. But I, And I also think perhaps that contributes to all the injuries. You know, so many of the injuries seem to be sort of muscular and hamstring injuries, you know, mm. which, you know, come from overexerting, I suppose, especially when you're tired. But I'm saying that totally as a layman. It's just the, you know, the, 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 what I sort of, I somehow suspect is, is one of the problems that everyone has been overexerting to cope with the new demands of the Premier League. I mean, hardly any of our players had experience of the Premier League start of the season um i think that has been a telling factor i really do the last time we did speak we were you had nathan jones in charge at the club of course he decided to leave jump ship go to southampton didn't really work for him um and rob edwards come in um recently after being sacked by uh the team just down the road should we call them that watford <laughs> <laughs> but um what do you feel that Rob Edwards has done slightly differently to what Nathan Jones did? Because Nathan Jones did a fantastic job, of course, at Luton, you know, driving the team through the divisions. Um, but at the same time, he just didn't seem to be able to get you over the line. You got into the playoffs, couldn't get over the line into the Premier League. But Rob Edwards just yeah, did it. Yeah, well... Um... First of all, it was a bit of a shock to the system for Luton fans uh, generally when yeah. we signed up Rob, Rob Edwards to be manager, having only recently been manager of Watford. But um, you know, in his interview, I'm told he was so impressive, he absolutely blew them away. Mm -hmm. He's a, a very personable bloke. He's a really nice guy. He's lovely to talk to. Um, but besides that, he has real thoughts on how to play the game and he has his own opinions uh and so that that was a great move obviously with hindsight to sign rob edwards um where he changed probably things from nathan jones and again getting into a technical area that i don't feel particularly qualified to talk about but he just was uh, a bit more bold i think that was the thing and and if we were holding on at the end of a game rather than trying to hold on he would send on an attacker to try and score the winner you know home or away um, so I think that was the big difference. But I must praise Nathan Jones for what he did at Luton Town. Phenomenal job twice, particularly when he came back and we were about six games from being relegated and it looked hopeless from the championship then. Yeah. Uh, and he kept us up and the next season got us to the playoffs, as you said. Um, and although you could say he failed to get us to the playoff final, uh, I wouldn't see it as a failure. I see it as an achievement getting to the playoffs. Mm -hmm. um, and off he's gone again. And I'm following him really closely now and, Charlton because I've got a great admiration for Nathan Jones even though he did sort of dump us in it twice and um, you know some people will never forgive him but I'm still interested to see how he gets on um, but yeah going back to Rob Jones he's just I think he's one saying go for it as I said earlier that's been his policy in the Premier League generally it seems to be his policy um, go for it and that was um, you know his, 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 that will always be his benchmark i think and i i absolutely love him for it and the fans love him for it and the fans really really um are so supportive of him and the team it's 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 brilliant to see it really is good because it, not so long ago when the consortium that i was chairman of took over at luton town it was a pretty toxic atmosphere at the club we'd been through some very bad times i mean in october the 6th uh, october 2006 i think we're probably just about in the playoff places in the championship mm -hmm. by 2008 we're playing in the um conference out of the yeah. football league so we had an absolute plummet we had three administrations in 10 years um and we ended up with 10 points deducted in league one and then 30 points as you know deducted in league two you can imagine the fans were disenchanted with a big d um and so 
when things were difficult in the conference and we weren't playing very well and we're losing to teams that traditionally we regarded as our sort of um, neighbours from the lower leagues, suddenly they weren't our neighbours, they were our big rivals. And when we were losing to some of these teams, it became, as I say, toxic. And the fans really, really were very unhappy and very bitter um, and said some pretty pejorative things about the club and who was running it and the manager and the players and all that. Um, and slowly but surely that turned round and now the fans are so on side it's just wonderful to see Hand on heart if we had come with you to the conference that season I honestly you know, even though Eddie Mitchell who sadly has recently passed away um, our former chairman said we wouldn't have gone out of business I honestly think that we might have because there was checks being written to keep AFC Bournemouth going at the time. Um, of course, going down into the conference as a traditional football league club, what was that actually like? How was that to manage considering the loss in revenues? Um, I guess that there was fans that chose not to go during those periods, even though Luton were one of the most better supported clubs in the National League or conference as it was. How difficult was that financially to keep the club effectively going in those lower reaches? Well, I think it was very, very difficult. I wasn't directly involved in the financial side because I was a, um, you know, a non-exec chairman. I was a figurehead. Yeah. Um, but some people uh, put their money in their pockets, you know, in those early days to keep us afloat. Um, but we were lucky that the fans generally, um, even though they were very um, vituperative, if you like, and uh, um, quite aggressive in their words about us, they still came to games. We were still getting gates of sort of seven or 8,000 in the conference, yeah. which is phenomenal. Um, and we were taking fans away games. You know, sometimes we go to away games and we double or even triple the average crowd at mm. an away club that usually gets about 400 or 600 people. So the fans really did stick with us, even though they were very fed up and got, you know, very, very downhearted about it all. And so, you know, the money did come in, but obviously we were nothing like the income you used to in the Football League and higher up, uh, you know, television money virtually disappeared and so on. We just kept going and we did some very sensible deals and part moved players on. I mean, one player outstanding signing during the conference years was Andre Gray. Mm -hmm we got from Hinkley when we played them in the FA Trophy or something. We quite fancied him, thought he was really quick. And he'd been a professional footballer and dropped out of the game, you know. Um, and uh, we signed him. And he it was an absolute revelation. Scored loads of goals for us. And we sold him on to Brentford for 600000 They sold him on for a few million. And we, we made a lot of money from him in add-ons afterwards, you know. Um, so we did a lot of very sensible dealing. We just kept ticking over, but it was tough. It was really, really tough. It was a culture shock. Um, but um, after five years, you know, five years, which I have to say, despite the frustrations, yeah. I thoroughly enjoyed because the people you meet around the grounds, the grassroots of football, as you might call it, the people who love their communities, love their clubs and work free and you get the chairman coming through from the kitchen with your lunch and things like that. That was pretty wonderful. And I, and I, I absolutely loved that when you took it day to day you have to live in your in today you can't just spend the whole time being angry about what happened in the past and frustrated about what isn't happening necessarily in the future you've got to live day to day and i loved visiting some of those grounds and meeting some really good people um but it was definitely tough financially it was it was a really tough old thing but slowly but surely you know we made it back and i guess it makes being in the premier league more satisfying doesn't it really? You know, having gone through those tough periods, you know, playing sides that, you know, like you say, local sides, sides that have never been in the Football League, teams that, of course, there was that playoff final, wasn't there, which went to literally penalties at the end against Wimbledon. You know, a side that had been formed, well, when Luton were in the Championship, um, you know, only a couple of years before all the troubles began. So, of course, there was, it must make it more satisfying getting to this level after having all those struggles. Oh, 
Gosh, yes. I mean, it is just fantastic. And that is why it's so important for Luton fans to enjoy the ride now, whatever happens at the end of the season. I think they are all taking that attitude. No one gave us an absolute any chance at all this season. Uh, and it has proved to be very, very tough. But I think um, a lot of people would have had us down by a little after Christmas. Garth Crook said that, you know, he, he thought, he said, I got no time for Luton, no respect for them sort of thing. It, it was horrible. Um, yet here we are with seven games to go and we're still in it. And that is pretty remarkable, I think. Um, so I'm, I'm just so grateful that this season has been um, such fun and given us such entertainment. Whatever happens at the end of it, it's been wretchedly disappointing at times. But overall, I'm, I'm, my whole feeling is one of enormous pride that to think where we were and where we are now, it is just fantastic. I'm grateful. And so are all the fans and very appreciative. It's not to say we've given up because I still think we have a chance. If we can get perhaps two or three players back, keep playing with the spirit we have and some vital home games, including Ace Everton, who are not far above us, you know. Yeah. Um, who knows? I might be a bit biased here. And I say biased. I know I'm not a Luton fan. I'm a Bournemouth fan. But I would absolutely love to see you stay up there is, like you say, that relationship, that connection between the clubs after what yeah. happened in December last year work with Tom Lockyer. And there will always be that connection, that minus 30 and minus 17 season, of yeah. course, in 2008. Um, so I've got so much time for you and I really hope that you do it. If you do end up going down, firstly, Rob Edwards, how easy is it going to be for him to keep the current crop of players that he's got um including the likes of ross barkley and andros townsend but secondly of course kenilworth road amazing stadium you know absolutely love it there but there is the move to power court on the horizon how is that progressing and secondly will that be the legacy of the premier league this season getting into the premier league one of the great things about it was it gave us enough funds to um, to be able to build the new stadium. We've got a lot of funds, you know, set aside, but we needed a bit more. Yeah. And getting into the Premier League, suddenly we we're able to set aside for argument's sake thirty million pounds to top up the funds to build that stadium. Yeah. We also had to spend about fifteen million to upgrade Kenilworth Road, and the, yeah. uh, as you probably know, we built a new stand in the summer. Absolutely yes. astonishing demolished an old stand, built a new one, and only delayed by, I think, one home game we had to postpone um, before getting it ready for the new season. It's an amazing stand, and it's now got what some say is the best press box and the best press gallery and the best place for commentary that they know in uh, any league in Europe, let alone in this country. I heard that from a Sky commentator only the other day. It's a brilliant position. Uh, it's obviously very, very modern, and it's quite low, and so you get a really good, you know, view of the pitch but um yes I mean, the, the big thing is that we wanted to raise enough money to be able to um uh, build the new stadium we had a certain amount we just need a bit more and getting into the premier league did that um and you know it, it's all systems go these things take time particularly when you've had uh, such a horrendous cost of living crisis and the war in Ukraine and other things going on and the pandemic, crikey, um, it has made uh, building a major um, a, a sort of a stadium like this really, really tough. But we are slowly but surely getting there. It will happen. And then we'll leave Kenilworth Road, much to my sadness, although I know it's inevitable and needs to be done. A lot of us will be very, very sad to leave the old girl. I mean, I've been going there for 66 years now. Mm -hmm. So it's like a second home. Yes. My car goes there automatically. <laughs> How easy is it going to be for Rob Edwards to keep hold of the players from this season? Um, do you feel that the, the squad is going to be able to be kept together if the worst does happen? Well, this is the problem, isn't it? I mean, you can understand it. Some of our players um, who are comparatively unknown mm -hmm. have really shone in the Premier League with us and therefore people have noticed them mm -hmm. and i know a number of players are being talked about who are in danger of losing and uh, that is a big worry if we go down but i hope that the majority of the players can stay i mean ross barkley has been fantastic yeah. 
Peros this season. But so, you know, Andros Townsend is contributing loads. He's got real Premier League quality, obviously. Mm-hmm. And people like Ted Mengi at the centre of defence, uh, Gabe Osho as well, uh, central yes. defender. I mean, he's a free transfer from Reading. And now you hear uh, Premier League clubs talking about him. Um, we've just got to bite the bullet and hope for the best. Um, one thing I would say is hugely in our favour is that they love being together. It's a very happy squad. Uh, I think Ross Barkley has said he's never played um, in a squad that's so together, where everyone gets on so well and they have such a fantastic uh, team spirit. And I'm hoping that Ross Barkley might say, well, you know, I'm 30 years old um, and uh, I've done all right in my career financially. I don't need to go for the big bucks elsewhere. I love it here and I'm going to stay here. And if we go down, I want to be part of getting us back up. That's what all the Luton fans will be hoping. I mean, a lot of them talk about Ross Barkley being the best player they've ever seen in a Luton shirt. And I have to say, he probably is, you know. And I, and it's difficult to say when you've been watching the club for so long and you've got some all-time favourites such as Ricky Hill, Mick Harford, Brian Steen. Great, great players. Fantastic for us in our top flight days in the 1980s. But Ross Barkley, my goodness, he is something else. He has really, really been outstanding for us this season. Um, and thank goodness, touch wood, he stayed injury-free. Um, first name on the team sheet has to be, and it all revolves around him. What a player. So skillful, so strong, so fast, so perceptive. Outstanding player. Um, and it would be a, a sad day if he were to leave us at the end of the season. But first of all, we've got to be positive and say we're going to stay up. Yes. He will stay with us because he wants to see us um, establish ourselves in the Premier League. That's the big thing. As you well know, it's getting up and staying in the Premier League that first season is so difficult. And uh, once that has happened, um, you know, you can build from there. It's just that first season holding on. Well, um, of course, we do have this game at the weekend. Nick, how do you think it's going to go? Oh, dear. Um, <laughs> as Glenn Hoddle once said, said I, never make, I, I don't make predictions and I never will. Which I thought was very funny. Um, <laughs> um, well... We've got a score to settle after what happened in the away game. I mean, I still yes. can't believe that we were three up at half time and lost 4-3. Uh, again, hugely entertaining. And we still could have scored in the second half, couldn't we? So it could have been ended differently. Um, so it, the game is so important to us. I know it's important to Bournemouth, but they are safe. And, yes. and I suppose, they, uh, is there a little bit of a, a look towards Europe? Um, There's a look towards it, isn't there? There's um, yeah. talk about it. Everybody's getting a little bit excited. Would it be a good thing yeah. for us? I, but, uh, I mean, I, I think it would be fantastic for Bournemouth, first of all, to finish well into the top half uh, and to get it to Europe would be brilliant. I mean, I have a real soft spot for Bournemouth. One of my best friends from childhood, um, mm. yeah, a Luton fan when we were growing up, but he's lived in Bournemouth for about 40 years now and he's now a, a regular Dean Corp. Um, big, big fans. He talks about we when he's talking about Bournemouth, whereas when we were kids, it was we talking about Luton, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, and uh, he, he said, uh, well, we're talking to each other all the time. We've been friends for 60 odd years now. Um, and so I have a real soft spot for Bournemouth, uh, which was absolutely multiplied hugely uh, with the Tom Lockyer thing. And yes. so, first of all, I'd love Bournemouth to do well. I don't want them to do well this weekend. Um, I, I, I feel because of how well we played down there, that it's a winnable game. Um, and um, fingers crossed. Fair enough. I actually think that really, uh, it's getting to the point now where Luton do need to get wins on the board. Oh, and yeah. I think, to be honest, the players will know that. Rob Edwards knows that. It's going to be a game that they will be gunning for a game which is very, very winnable. And hand on heart, I think we'll be lucky. Home games uh, generally have got to be winnable, haven't they, really? Uh, And when it's not the the, the Manchester Cities or the Liverpools or Arsenals or Tottenham's, um, you have got to take the attitude we can win this. Um, In going away, we've got the next one after Bournemouth is Manchester City away having just had Arsenal away and previously Saturday, Tottenham away. So it's a bit of a tough run. So um, this home game, it is a shining beacon of hope um, because it's uh, not in the, you know, a top four or five team and it's also at home. Um, But I don't know, we've got, as I said earlier, we've got Fulham at home, Brentford at home, um, Everton at home to come. 
these are games we have to win now. Seven games to go. We have to win at home. Well, I'm going to be completely honest. Now I know you got Man City afterwards, after us, away from home. Rob Edwards is going to be putting more impetus on this. We'll be very, very lucky to walk away from Kenilworth Road with a point. And do you know what? I wouldn't begrudge Luton getting taking the three points because, A, I do want you to stay up. But secondly, it's a case of, at the end of the day, you've done fantastically well. That was a guest appearance from my wife, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Does she get but, credit? <laughs> she can do as she wants. She can do. We'll ask her what she thinks of the game. And what we just had a load of grandchildren <laughs> arriving as well. That's why <laughs> it's a little bit chaotic out there. Sorry, what was your point, Craig? <laughs> so, no, that's all right. I honestly do think that Rob Edwards is going to have more impetus on this game. And... I do fancy you to win this. I do now, um, especially. He'll be looking at that Man City game and going, well, that's a free hit. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I think he and the side are going to be gunning for this and we'll be lucky. If well, the we thing is, away. you look at Manchester City and yeah. they'll have, you know, individuals on their bench who are worth more than our squad added together. Yeah. I mean, they're on a different planet. Financially and, and and their ability is phenomenal. Uh, I think they're a wonderful side. However, you know, uh, much money they've thrown at it. They uh, they still got local lads like Phil Foden, who's just a brilliant player. Yes. Um, do hope he gets a good chance in the Euros, don't you? Oh, um, so you know, we've got to accept that there are three hits, and Arsenal was probably one, and Manchester City was one, um, and even Tottenham away. My kids went to Tottenham. They said it was phenomenal. Had five members of my family at the Tottenham game. I haven't been to the new stadium. I said it's spectacular. Have you been there? Uh, I haven't as yet, no, but it does look absolutely amazing. Yeah, something else, something else. So, yeah, teams like Man City away are free hits. But on the other hand, we've got an away game at Wolves. You know, has to, you have to regard that as winnable, especially yep. when the pressure is really on uh, in the last few games. Looking forward to that. I'll be going to that. That's mm -hmm. comparatively local to where I live. And um, I'll be going to a few home games as well at Kenilworth Road. I haven't been to as many this season because I've still been sort of pacing myself after my uh, trials and tribulations of the last 12 months. But, uh, yeah, I, I still think we have a chance. But I would pray to God that we get a few players back from injury. Well, fingers crossed for you, Nick. Before I let you go, um, of course, you are presenting at the moment as well. Um, and you're yeah. doing a lot of work for Midland today. How is that going? Yeah, I'm doing two days a week. Um, and that's suiting me fine at the moment, pacing myself again, as I just said. Um, and uh, it's great. It's really good. I, uh, I mean, I love the job, even though I'm uh, probably the oldest TV presenter in the country, apart from David Attenborough now. I'm uh, 76. Uh, and um, the the last rival to the oldest presenter um, is a very close friend of mine who presented Central News uh, down the road. Um, he, he recently retired, Bob Warman. And before that, of course, Fred Dynage. Yes, Fred Dynage. He's one of your boys, isn't he? Um, he is, yes. And uh, so, yeah, I think I'm the oldest, but I still enjoy it. I find it very stimulating. I love the banter. I love having work colleagues who are more than 50 years younger than I am. You can't believe that I remember the previous coronation in 1953. They can't believe I remember Winston Churchill being prime minister. These are things from their history books. To me, they're part of my life. Well, long may it continue, Nick. And again, thank you so much for coming on this show. Um, no doubt we'll catch up at some point in the future. Um, and, you know, hopefully, fingers crossed, it'll be next season when you're in the Premier yeah. League. And we'll be doing another preview. Yeah, great stuff. It's lovely to talk to you, Craig, and all the best. And my best wishes to everyone, everyone, and I mean this sincerely, associated with Bournemouth Football Club, because, my goodness, um, our bond is very special, I think. Most definitely. Most definitely. And all the very, very best um, to yourself and everybody connected with Luton. And likewise, I can echo that, that bond. You know, it, if it was tight before because of what we went through in 2008 and throughout the years, you know, my, in December, it just got tighter and tighter and tighter. And, you know, 
that will never ever break the bond between these two football clubs. So, like I say, all the very, very best to yourself and everybody at Luton. And yeah, no doubt we'll catch up. We'll catch up next season. Yeah, Craig, thank you. Thank you so much, Nick. And thank you, everybody, for joining us. Remember, hit the like, the subscribe, the bell button below. It helps this channel grow. That rhymes. I love that little saying now. I'm going to use that continuously. Now, do remember, we did have Nick on this show a while back. It was during the COVID period. So if you want to watch that interview, in the top right-hand corner, you'll be able to do so. So just press that button and go watch that interview with Nick. That does include all of his time and his TV career as well. We also have had a number of special guests on recently. We had Peter Hooten from The Farm all together now. We had Damon Minchella from Ocean Colour Scene. We've also had lots of other special guests as well across a number of different professions so please 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 do go check them out and so of course some former players as well until the next show up the cherries and up Luton Town as well up the Hatters and we'll see you next time thank you for joining us <laughs>